that the A index variable is very, very important. It will allow you to do very cool stuff. Now, um, another thing is that um, <coughs> we have two commands available for us in here, which are break and continue. Those commands, um, what they do, well, break does exactly as you think. It will um, break out of the loop as soon as you um, use that command, and the loop will simply not continue. Let's let's say that if a index equals two, well, we're gonna break. Basically, what is gonna happen is that even though the loop is set up to be five in here, five times, um, as soon as we reach e a index two, the loop is gonna break. So let's let's um, do the following message box a index right so we can see where we are and message box out of the loop so we can see when we came out right so if we run this code we're gonna see we have number one as soon as I have number two what is gonna happen is that I'm gonna get the message box saying out of the loop because we used the break command that is another very important command I'm gonna show you why would in which situation you would need this particular command? Um, of course, you would have your own ideas of um, when you would want your loop to break. Um, but I'm going to show you one condition that is very often you will see it very often. Another one is the continue continue command. In this particular case, what I'm going to do first off is that I'm going to grab this line and put it below the if statement, so you can see the effect. So, first, we're going to check if we are in index number 2. If we are not, we're going to execute this particular message box. If we are in index number 2, we're going to continue. What this does is that it will actually jump that particular... Um, it will go out of the loop. Well, not out of the loop. It will just simply not execute what is below the continue command. So, basically... Um, the message box number two is not going to show up because we're going to jump it. So as soon as we run, we have number one in here, and the next message box that I get is three. As I mentioned, as soon as the index it was two, we just simply told our hotkey to not execute anything else, just simply continue with the next iteration. That is another very uh, important command, and those two commands, as I mentioned before, they are. Um, common to other loops like for example if you're using the while loop you can do the break and continue exactly the same as I just showed you now um, let me go ahead and talk about the uh, the case in which you want to use the break command let's say that you have an infinite loop and then you tell me yeah when in hell would I need an infinite loop well <coughs> sorry as an example, let's say that you um, are making a code that is going to check for a specific pixel um, color. Let's say um, that you're making a, a bot or something. Yeah, it is not the best example, but yeah, a lot of people make bots and stuff. So basically, if you have a loop that is checking for a specific pixel, and what you want to do is that as soon as that pixel is found, you want to stop looking for it. It's simple as that. Well, basically, um, you would have to use the pixel get color. Um, there's a command for that. We're not going to go into it. But as soon as you find the pixel, let's say if pixel, um, then you are going to break. The thing is that basically what I'm saying is the following. There is a um, a command called pixel get color. I think. Well, let's do this. Let's just simply open the help file. That's how it works. So. Um, help file and then pixel get color there it is um, <coughs> <coughs> basically what it does is that you give it a location on your on your screen an X and Y location and um, on that location it will get um, the color that is in there and it's gonna put it directly onto a variable that you that you specify so let's say Pix is the variable that I want to store the, ver the color in, and then I, I want to check uh, 400 by 600, I don't know. Um, basically, <coughs> if pixel equals an, a, a 
BGR color. I think in this case it is actually the opposite, but it doesn't matter. If if the pixel is that particular color, then we go out of the break, uh, out of the loop, and we execute some code, message box true or something. So basically, this is an infinite loop. As soon as you run the code, this the um, <coughs> the script is gonna start looking for that particular pixel. Um, let's say 400 by 600 would be around here. I don't know. And um, it is going to get the pixel, it's going to store the color into a variable called pix, and then the script is going to check if that color that I just got is this particular color. If it is not, then it will just simply continue getting the color over and over again. Um, as soon as that color is this, which I think is blue at this point, um, RGB. Mm. BGR, yeah, that is green. In this case, it is G. Uh, it is green. Um, so as soon as I get a green pixel in that particular location, um, the um, the script is simply going to go out of the loop and then show a message box. I will not test it because I do not have any green pixels. I do not have anything. Um, I could try to test it, but. Uh, what I want you to get the idea is that, yes, you would need an infinite loop or, for example, a timer for these kind of things, but I personally do it with a loop. Um, and if you have an infinite loop, you would want to use the break command to get out of the infinite loop. If you do not use the break command, first of all, in this particular case, my loop is um, not correct. Um, it's not correct uh, in the sense that basically it would eat up your CPU, usually you would have to put something like a sleep 10 or something like that, that would not eat your CPU, CPU. Um, but um, the other thing is that then you will, uh, the only way to get out of the loop is actually exiting the script, which is not very useful. Um, breaking uh, a loop can be done as uh, as you're seeing with an if statement or you can use for example a hotkey to do that it's a little bit more tricky we will see that later on um, how to break a loop with a hotkey um, but you you would use the break command so um, with this I'm gonna be um, almost finishing this particular topic I just want to mention <coughs> Sorry, I have a, a freaking call for a while now. <laughs> so, um, what I do want to mention is that the loop command um, expects text, literal text, right next to it. And you might be wondering why I want to mention that now. <laughs> um, because, as I mentioned before, you can use um, a variable to specify how many times your loop is going to run, right? But as the loop command is actually expecting literal text right next to it, you would have to enclose the variable within percent signs. That is something that if you saw the first video, you should already remember that when you are um, when the auto hotkey expects literal text, then whenever you refer to a variable, you should put the percent signs around. So basically, if I say variable equals five, then it is it is actually the same as I mentioned uh, as I did before which is um, the loop is going to run five times, right? This is the way that you do that. In the next video, I'm going to enter a little bit deeper with the loop command into some um, uh, sub-commands that you have with it that are very useful in certain situations. And uh, for now, I think this particular introduction is enough to get you an idea of how you, you might use the loops and um, to get you an idea of the structure of it. So with this I'm going to finish up and we're going to be seeing each other in the next video.